Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Chess 960 series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and today we are going to be taking a look at the game between Slow Chess and Monolith. Um, I was uh, actually planning to do this uh, video much earlier in the evening but uh, got distracted by the most amazing game I've ever seen. It's uh, a victory by uh, Leela Zero over Stockfish. Um, really quite amazing and I'm definitely looking forward to uh, um, to uh, analysing uh, that one a little later. But this one is also fantastic. It's um, um, actually yeah, just a double pawn sacrifice by uh, Slow Chess in the opening and then powering through with a great use of the initiative against Monolith. So um, let's have a look at it. And it's a very interesting game because it's very, very similar to um, a normal uh, chess position because the uh, starting position is the same, but just a little bit different. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you look at this position, um, you'll notice that actually the only difference to the normal chess starting position is that the um, uh, the queens and the uh, rooks are swapped around. Um, now, normally when um, the knights are placed, just like in normal chess, um, then you normally think that um, a central plan is quite a good idea, you know, something like d4, e4, because you can play the knights to c3 and f3, and they'll control the centre and also protect your centre as well, you know, which isn't always uh, uh, the case with, uh, with chess 960, where the knights can be on, on very odd positions. Um, yeah, the, the one thing about playing these d4, c4 openings is that, in general, um, it actually suits black better to have the queen on a8 rather than white um, because black's going to play b6 and bishop b7 and get a lot of pressure um, along the a8h1 diagonal. So, um, yeah, I mean, you might actually think that, um, that white, you know, might be better just uh, playing a quiet, ready type uh, um, opening um, uh, itself. But, um, yeah, of course, that wouldn't lead to such a big uh, advantage. I mean, um, in this position, Stockfish was playing uh, 1b3, um, knight f6, bishop b2, b6, c4, bishop b7, knight f3, d6, and then just playing a move like d3 and knight bd2 just to uh, deal with this pressure against the knight on f3, and then playing e3, bishop b7, bishop b2, and carrying on like that. But it wasn't a great deal. It was just um, you know a tiny edge for, um, for white there. Ooh, stuff happening. It's uh, uh, the first game of the um, uh, of the Leela Stockfish uh, Sufi uh, for, for FRC, and I think that uh, that Leela's doing some some good business there. Um, but Slow Chess played uh, D4, which is you know as I said very reasonable with the knights, uh, um, you know placed within easy reach of the center. And uh, B6 was played. Knight F3, Knight F6, um, Bishop F4. Um, yeah, decent to put the bishop on f4. I mean, normally in, in Queen's Gambit lines, you know, the bishop often goes to g5, you know, but it's spinning the knight to a, uh, to a queen maybe. Here, uh, yeah, it's just a rook there, so it's uh, maybe less interesting. And also, bishop f4 attacks the pawn on c7, which is the point weakened by the fact the queen's not on d8. So it makes perfect sense. It's uh, a free developing move, you could say. So um, d6 played, c4. Bishop b7, knight c3, and e6. And here actually you notice uh, just that little problem of the uh, queen being uh, uh, absent from d1. Uh, because if you go e3, you have to deal with the idea of bishop takes f3. Now, I mean, you definitely could play this as a pawn sacrifice. You know, queen f3, rook g1. Not at all stupid. Um, but, um, but actually, you know, even if uh, black doesn't take the, uh, the knight on f3, you could just play a move like bishop e7. Bishop b2 castles, and this was a game between dragon and uh, and stockfish on my uh, 14 thread machine. And uh, you know, b4, knight bd7, a3, knight e4, you know, isn't the queen the queen and bishop are just beautifully placed there, you know? So, um, uh, actually, this is a, just a very nice uh, sort of queen's Indian uh, position for uh, for black. So, slow chess played a, a very interesting plan, actually, a very specific concrete plan. Um, and uh, yeah, frankly, not sure I would ever have thought of it, um, you know, but uh, yeah, really lovely idea. Played the move queen c1. Doesn't look very, um, very natural at all, really. Why are you doing that? Well, after bishop e7, uh, slow chess played d5. And um, yeah, I mean, you can see that um, this queen is uh, 
sort of looking at the C7 pawn. If uh, pawns get exchanged with e takes d5, c takes d5, we could be targeting the c7 pawn. And the queen's also, you know, looking to come maybe to e3 if after e takes d5. So um, the queen's just entering into contact with dark squares. Um, and this is actually, you know, very, very interesting. Now, e takes d5 was played in the game, which is, uh, I think, you know, the most uh, critical line. Um, castles was uh, Komodo's preference in, um, in my um, uh, engine games. Um, and after e4, it was just playing e takes d5, takes and c6, you know, just uh, blasting open the center there whilst, uh, you know, the white king is undeveloped. And that... That was basically pretty okay for black. There weren't any particular problems. Now, what um, uh, Dragon did from the white side when Stockfish played castles, or maybe I forced Stockfish to play castles, Dragon was playing the move G4, which is also pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, C6, takes, takes, knight G5, bishop C8, queen C2, E5, bishop C1. I mean, it, you sort of think it looks like Simon Williams playing, right? Not... Uh, <laughs> Not these uh, 3,500 engines, but yeah, I mean, very, very dangerous. Um, you've given up um, uh, the G-pawn. I mean, you've kind of forced black to take it. And of course, you know, this king side is really weak. We've got queen G6 coming in. We've got bishop H6 ideas. Very, very dangerous play. You know, uh, Stockfish held it, but it, it did feel quite, um, quite tricky for black. Um, but E takes D5 was played, and now... Um, uh, slow chess showed that it wasn't the idea to try and you know take on d5 and you know maybe take on c7 later that wasn't the idea um, I mean it uh, could be a little bit risky that queen's looking uh, very close to getting trapped when you go queen c7 maybe something like knight c6 followed by rook d7 I don't know not impossible but um, uh, slow chess's idea was to play knight d4 which is really nice d takes c4 so that's two pawns for monolith and then knight f5 and uh, so we're attacking e7 we're stopping the the black king from castling we're attacking g7 you can't really allow white to uh, to do that and of course his queen on c1 is also in contact with e3 and maybe also with g5 so um yeah all those pieces are fitting together it's a really nice idea i have to say um so rook g8 was played um f3 and this is a very nice move as well really calm idea from uh, slow chess you know we're just going to go e4 and uh, that's going to block in the bishop on b7 after we go e4 to defend the pawn on c4 i mean black doesn't really want to play d5 i mean that opens up uh, some um some uh, some dark squares anyway so black's going to have to spend a little bit of time wasting uh, yeah you know playing wasteful uh, pawn moves just to defend the pawn um, I mean, at some stage, it's one of those interesting things that, you know, um, at some stage, uh, um, Black's position is in a way so bad. You know, Black's uh, uh, got the king stuck in the center, had to play rook g8. Pieces are a bit stuck that you sort of, Black sort of gets forced to make um, non-developing moves to keep its material because, you know, if it lost just a little bit of ma its material, it would just have a horrific position. So, um, um, yeah, I mean, uh, slow chess kept on going. I mean, natural fact, my engines, uh, um, you know, Komodo and, uh, and Stockfish, they just thought that, uh, you know, Black's in principle doing okay here, but, uh, but White does have full compensation for the two pawns. So Bishop E2, and now um, uh, Monolith started to play a little bit oddly. Um, the best line here was to play um, knight bd7. I mean, I think this is the most natural. Castles, queen b7. And these are very nice moves, you know, sort of uh, keeping everything, um, um, everything together, simply, you know, and uh, um, protecting the b pawn. So if you ever go b3 to undermine the queen side, then the b5 pawns are uh, protected. And kind of waiting in a way to see what, um, what white will do. Because, you know, white's played this move e f, uh, f3 and e4, which is great. But of course, you know, in order to break through, white would really need to play f4 and e5. So it's not really that clear how, um, how white is going to break through there. Now, um, what um, uh, my engine center to do was to go rook e1 and then play this move uh, um, knight a2 um, in order to come to b4 and hit this bishop on c6. Uh, but we got, um, yeah, I mean, these are kind of difficult things to uh, to understand, you know. And I don't think I could ever find a, a manoeuvre like this. But somehow, you know, black was kind of surviving. But I have to say, of course, you know, that this is really, this is really extremely fraught. This is something that, um, um, you know, an engine can do and it escapes. But um, uh, again, very, very tough for a human player. 
So, I mean, certainly, um, you know, uh, I think slow chess is planned for uh, for human players would be exceedingly dangerous. Um, Monolith played uh, King F8. Castles, Queen B7, that's okay. Bishop E3. So, um, uh, looking for all sorts of things, actually. Um, bishop, the bishop on E3. I mean, if I eventually get a rook onto A1, the rook could, uh, the bishop could support rook A7. I mean, I could also play the bishop round to D4, and then even look for something like Queen G5, putting pressure on those dark squares. But there's also um, a very nice extra idea, a tactical idea, that I think really Monolith misses. Um, and um, yeah, and then afterwards, its position is getting is right on the edge. Um, again, I think knight bd7 would be my uh, my favourite choice here for uh, for black. Um, but um, monolith played rook e8, and it got hit with e5. I mean, we talked about you know white wanting to play f4 and e5 in order to have a break. Well, here actually monolith has given white this uh, this break tactically without even needing to prepare it, because after d takes e5, knight takes e7. And, um, well, there's a big problem for black. Obviously, king e7, bishop c5 check. That's why the bishop went back to the uh, g1, a7 diagonal. Uh, king e6, well, I don't think you're going to survive very long. f4, threatening f5, mate, something like that. So um, rook takes c7 played. And now um, bishop c5 is, of course, an idea. But we're not going to just go after material. We're going to go rook d8 check. Um, now, rook e8 allows bishop c5 checkmate. That's one of the key points. So bishop e8, and now queen d2. And, uh, well, I mean, you can imagine, right? I mean, black's so tied up here. This is a, a really very difficult position. And, of course, you know, um, Leela and uh, um, uh, Dragon and, uh, and Stockfish, they all manage to survive somehow. I mean, they play the move knight bd7, covering c5, which is quite logical. And after rook a1 which is uh, very unpleasant. Again, it's what I said, using this bishop on e3, we're going to take on b5 and then go rook a7 and embarrass the queen. Playing the move uh, g5 here, just to free some space for the king. Takes, takes, um, rook a5, or rook a7, rook a5, knight b6, takes, rook d7. You know, and you'll gradually emerge. You'll give this g5 pawn, you'll gradually emerge, and uh, you've got a horrific pawn structure, but um, but you're not in such bad shape. You know, it's uh, um, this was how one of the games went. Knight fd7, f6, bishop f7, king e7. Again, it's quite uncomfortable, but black's got an extra pawn, and the pieces are quite active. You know, queen on c6, rook on d1, and these knights are doing a good job of keeping everything at bay, you know, stopping bishop a4, stopping rook c5. So it was probably still possible to hold on. But after knight c6, all of my games uh, between my engines, uh, probably about 20 or 30, they're all losses from now on. Um, and the key point is, is that there's, there's no threat against this rook on d8. Because when you go knight d8 and I go queen d8, there's no way that you're getting, you're getting rid of that queen. So actually, I can just, uh, I can just let you do it. Um, obviously, anything like rook d7 allows bishop c5 check. So queen d8, a, b. Bishop c5, tie you up completely. And now this was the really important move. And I think this is the move that Monolith had, uh, had missed. Um, I mean, I guess if you can play queen d7, um, then the queen has to move away. And then maybe you can get in g5 or something like that. Though still, you know, I mean, still looks really awful. But this move, rook d1, was, was really nice from uh, Slow Chess. And it had seen this quite a bit of time in advance. Just stop the queen from going to d7, and then how are you ever getting free? How are, on earth are you ever getting out of this pin without, you know, losing a piece? Um, well, the answer is you're not, of course. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, I mean, this is just a total disaster. So, uh, monolith went rook h8, um, f4. Uh, we just want to open the e-file. I mean, if the e-file gets opened, I play my bishop to f3. That's also a, a very useful uh, square for the bishop. I'm going to threaten just bishop takes c6. Bishop takes c6 is impossible, and queen c6 allows queen takes c7. Quite apart from the fact that I could also just go rook e1 and pick it, pick it up. So um, e4 played by monolith, and now g4. Um, ah, it's so lovely when uh, you know these great engines are just attacking like this. Just a free-flowing play. Um, knight d5 played by monolith, and then, um, I mean, there's just so many ways to win. But this was pretty good. This was pretty pretty nice, really. We take like this, and black can do nothing at all to stop the move knight g6. Picking up the rook, and then white's just got an extra piece. And that was uh, very, very simple. Uh, a slow chess mated in 57 moves. 
So a, a really great game. You know, I mean, you, you tend to focus on, you know, Leela and Stockfish and Komodo, but, um, uh, you know, it really pays to also look at games from the other engines because, uh, you know, they're phenomenal as well. And Slow Chess was, uh, was very, very strong in, uh, in, uh, in Chess 960. I was very, very impressed. But I thought, um, yeah, the concept was really nice. Queen C1 and then this move D5 and Knight D4. And uh, I love these uh, ideas where, you know, you sort of bring your pieces in connection with each other and there's no immediate mating threats, but all your pieces are working together nicely. And this uh, plan of building up behind it with F3 and E4 was uh, was quite beautiful. And uh, yeah, I mean, this was, uh, well, it didn't defend particularly well, or well, not stockfish level anyway, and this E5 uh, trick was, uh, was, was quite beautiful. You know, so uh, so there we are. I hope you enjoyed that game. If you liked it, why not give me a like or even subscribe to the channel? We're at uh, something like 750 and we definitely need to get to a thousand or more. And uh, otherwise, yeah, also take a look at my book, The Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, which is chock a block full of wonderful engine games and uh, fantastic tips and uh, yeah, real practical examples of how to train with engines to make your own game uh, better and what we can really learn from engines. And I think it's a lot. Um, and uh, otherwise, well, hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you soon for the next video. There's plenty more planned for Chess 960.